the next speaker is Newt Gingrich. He's in the tent right now with his wife. Uh, speaker Gingrich uh, probably knows Iowa as well as I did. I ran into him at the state fair yesterday, and uh, I think he could give media directions around the tent uh, just as good as anyone else. Um, I had a chance to talk to him after the debate on Thursday night. Passionate, cares about issues, and I know he wants to talk to you about them today. So let's welcome uh, our first presidential candidate at the Google IowaRepublican.com soapbox, Speaker Newt Gingrich. Well, let me just say, first of all, that Callista and I are delighted to be here and, and to have a chance to talk with you. And obviously, I'd love to have your vote uh, here at Ames. We're, we're focused on January. We haven't spent a lot of money uh, on the straw poll, but we'd love to have anybody who agrees that you need the strong leadership. Let, let me ask one or two quick questions, because I'm curious about uh, your feelings about what's going on. How many of you are genuinely worried about the economy? How many of you think that shrinking from 535 House and Senate members to 12 is a really bad idea? Okay. How many of you distrust virtually every number that comes out of Washington about budgets? Okay. Now, I wanted to walk you through this. Close and I were talking about it earlier. Uh, Rasmussen reported recently that only 17 percent of the American people believe that government has the consent of the governed the lowest number in, in history. And that's why. People understand the economy is a big problem. Washington does nothing except make it worse. People understand that they want all 535 state uh, uh, senators and House members working on the problem. They don't trust a select committee of 12 hand-picked people on a partisan basis. And people like to have honest accounting and honest numbers. Furthermore, Americans want a strong, healthy economy. And so what I'm w suggesting you do, in addition to the presidential campaign, I want your help, but I want to be clear. I'm not going to ask you to be for me. Because if you're for me, you're going to vote, go home and say, I sure hope he fixes it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to be with me. And the difference is, <laughs> if we win, it is an eight-year commitment that you're going to call your senators, you're going to call your House members, you're going to call your governor and your state legislators. And remember, if we implement the Tenth Amendment and we shrink bureaucracy in Washington, we have to grow citizens back home to fill out the vacuum that we're taking away from Washington. So it really is a team that is together, which is really different. Also, a number of folks here, I'm very, very supportive of Strong America Now, which I think is a fabulous idea. If you wanted a single justification of the Iowa process, it is the fact that Michael George, who helped create Lean Six Sigma, which is a very sophisticated management model that enables Boeing and Motorola and others to be astonishingly productive. And he figured out that if he could help launch citizens in Iowa to have a single model, the biggest single change in thinking about how government works since the civil service reforms of the 1880s in 130 years. Because what it says is simple. What if we took all the things we've learned about productivity in the private sector and we brought it into government? What would happen? So one of the challenges I think we should make to Congress right now, not not in 2013. I mean, they're going to get paid for another year and a half. They ought to work now. And one of the things we ought to say to them is, you want to save, I think it's a trillion, 500 billion, or whatever the number is that they've come up with. And that's what the Committee of 12 is going to do. Well, if they came back to Washington and every single subcommittee of the House and Senate took the part of the government they're responsible for, and they brought in experts in Lean Six Sigma, and they said, okay, would you show us how we could save money? The estimate Michael George has is, that we would save $500 billion a year if we ran the federal government as well as we run private businesses. $500 billion a year is three times the amount the Committee of 12 is looking for. 
Now, my goal would be to preempt the Committee of 12 and say, fine, if we just save the, the money, can you guys go away? <laughs> and you can help do that. Let me just say one last thing about where we are. And, and I, we, I have many good friends who are running. I've known some of them for many, many years. They're all fine people. But we as a people, beyond Republicans, independents, Democrats, we have to find a way to come together for a very important reason. This is the most important turning point in America since 1860. You have on the one hand class warfare, bureaucratic socialism, and a secular left-wing attitude which fundamentally replace America. Class warfare is something we've never had. Ronald Reagan used to tell the story about the British worker who stood on the street corner, watched a Rolls Royce go by, and said to his son, someday we'll get that person out of that car. <laughs> the American worker stood on a street corner with his son watch, or his daughter and watched a Cadillac go by and said, someday you'll own that car. And that was the difference. We didn't have class warfare. We didn't have the kind of violence you've watched for the last week in Great Britain. Because every American had the right to dream. Every American had the right to pursue a better future. This is where Herman Cain is such a wonderful person to have in the Republican Party saying, you know, we can rise. We can do things. Second, bureaucratic socialism is, is a viciously dishonest model based on the Europeans. They know they can't have real socialism. They know we won't allow them to take over all the companies. So here's what bureaucratic socialism says. You get to pretend you own your company, but my bureaucrats will tell you what to do. I was with a doctor in, in Cedar Rapids this week, or last week, who gave me the letter she'd gotten from, from, from the federal government in Washington that told her how to run her office. I mean, it's everything wrong about the European model. We are citizens, not subjects. And we want government officials who work for us, not government officials who try to control us. It's that fundamental. <laughs> Lastly, this nation was founded with a political document called the Declaration of Independence which says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Not principles, not philosophy, not ideology. We hold these truths. And what are they? that all of us are created equal, and that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> you cannot explain America without explaining that your rights personally come from God. We are the only country in history that says our, our creator has endowed each one of you personally. Those rights are unalienable. That means no judge, which is why yesterday's ruling on Obamacare is very good. No judge, no bureaucrat, no politician can take away your rights. And that means that you are sovereign. You are the center of power in America. You loan power to the government, which is why our Constitution says we the people. And Obama completely fundamentally is wrong on every major aspect. He's wrong economically because he believes in class warfare and he believes in bureaucratic socialism. He is wrong about the nature of America. Because as, as you may know, on at least four occasions, we have him on videotape skipping our creator when he talked about being in Dalbara, even when it was on the teleprompter. <laughs> and so I just want you to know that we as a team, reaching out to every American of every background, and I'll close with this simple model, easy to do. All of you can help implement it. You go into every neighborhood in Iowa, and you walk up to people, and you say to them, would you rather have food stamps for your children or a paycheck? And there's not a neighborhood in Iowa that won't have a vast majority of every background who say, I'd much rather have a paycheck. Obama is the best food stamp president in American history. He has put more people on food stamps by killing the economy than any president in history. I would like to be the best paycheck president in history, and I would like you to be with me in making that possible. Thank you. Good luck, and God bless you.